Now, please forgive me. It is. It's all right. Mrs. Randolph, come in. Come in. Uh, how's Mr. Randolph this morning? Well, he's, he's still desperately ill and he's drilling down there in the street like he's driving out of his mind. It is an awful racket. It's even bothering me. In fact, the only thing that bothers me more is Inspector Faraday. Well, could you do me a favor? Certainly. You know, my husband's too sick to be moved to a hospital. <laughs> You have influence in town. Couldn't you phone it's and see... It's as good as done, Mrs. Randolph. Come in. Come right in. I'll call Tom Jackson. He's street commissioner and ought to be able to have that noise stopped immediately. Oh, thank you, Blackie. I knew you could do something. i better phone Tom this home. He's never in his office at this hour. Probably wake him up, but after all, he's a public servant. And we're the public, aren't we? Yes, you will have that drilling stopped until my husband's out of danger. I certainly will try. Okay. Hello? Uh, Tom. Speaking. I hope I got you out of bed. This is Blackie. Well, you didn't get me out of bed, but you did wake me up. Uh, I was at a meeting at 4 o'clock this morning. What's... I'm sorry, Tom, but look, there's a sick man in my apartment building, and some of your boys are breaking up the street down below us. It's driving the poor I know man what you almost want. Out... Okay, I'll handle it right away. What's your address? The Sunset Parkway, number 51. All right, I'll... So, wait a minute. Is it just 7 o'clock, or has my watch stopped? It's 7 o'clock, and I want that drilling stopped. Blackie, there's something wrong somewhere. There hasn't been any order to repair anything on Sunset Parkway. And even if there were, they wouldn't be drilling at this hour of the morning. It's against the law. What? Oh, there's something wrong, Blackie. But I'll look into it right away. Uh, never mind, Tom. Uh, you go back to sleep. I'll look into this myself. And now, back to Dick Calmer as Boston Blackie. Enemy to those who make him an enemy. Friend to those who have no friends. The drilling out on the street will cover us. Go ahead with your drill, Larry. We're working on schedule. Okay, Mr. Beecher. Do you think I've drilled into this vault deep enough now, Mr. Beach? Yes, I think so, Larry. Looks good. How deep is the hole? Well, it's deep enough to be full with a stick of dynamite bigger than the first two I drove. Well, then let's get that dynamite in there. All right. You slide it in. Yeah, Billy, you do. Yeah, sure, Mr. Beach. Hey, don't push it in so hard, Billy boy. You want us all to be blown up? It has to be detonated before it explodes, Larry. Oh. That's why it's hooked in ready, Billy? Yeah, Mr. Beach. Let's get the way off to the other side of the bank and let it go. Come on, Larry. <laughs> Unless you want that bald door to fall on top of you. Oh, not me. I'm with you, Mr. Beecher. What time's it, Billy? Seven three, Mr. Beecher. Yes, We're seven. Right on time. Blast Yeah, let's see it blowed up, Billy boy. All right. Here it goes. It open, Mr. Beecher. Oh, I sure draw those holes good, didn't I, Mr. Beecher? Well, never mind about that. Let's get in that vault and grab that money and get out of here before the place is full of guards. Come on, Larry. Oh, Billy boy, nobody never heard that little noise. Not after the boss got that big idea of them drilling the streets out in front while we was working. Uh, the money's in those sacks there. Let's each grab as many as we can and beat it. Yeah. I'm grabbing mine, Mr. Beecher. I sure hope Smith's out back of the car. He will be. Well, I got a hold of two bags of stuff, Mr. Beecher. Come on, Billy boy. Wait let's a minute. Go. Look back. What is it? Somebody's coming. Mr. Beecher, it's a guard. <laughs> it was a guard. It's a corpse now. Oh, that sure was good shooting, Mr. Peach. <laughs> he dropped without even seeing it. He's seen the last of everything. Now, come on. We've seen the last of this bank. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning. Good morning, Blackie. Well, well, you're out early this morning. I'll call for your car right oh, away. I'm not ready for my car yet, Harry. Say, what happened to those men who were breaking up the street out here a few minutes ago? Oh, they just left Blackie. Oh. And you know, it, it was funny the way they left, too. One guy yelled, that's it. Let's quit. And they dumped their drills into the back of the truck. And away they went. That's funny. Yes, tis that, Blackie. Never known they worked on the streets this early in the morning. They're not supposed to, Harry. And I just found out they're not supposed to be digging up Sunset Parkway at any time of the day. Oh, now, Blackie, if you think anything's maybe mysterious, I got their license number for you. You know, being a doorman, I, I make a hobby of license plates. 
It was a truck. And uh, the number was a crazy 012345. Thanks, Harry. And I guess that... Hey, look, Harry. It's the bank across the street. Blackie, that's Williams, one of the bank guards. Look at him, he's staggering. He's been shot. Come on, let's go over there and give him a hand. Right. Hurry up. Right. I think he just collapsed behind that parked car. I wonder what's the matter with him. I didn't hear any shoot. Who could hear anything with that drilling in the street? Oh. Uh-oh, Harry. Uh. He stamped a couple of bullets. Williams. Williams, this is me, Harry. Harry? The doorman is number 51. You know me, don't you? Harry, the bank, they blasted. The vault, they got away. Out the back, Harry. That was the reason for the drilling in the street to cover up a blast. Williams, did you see the men who shot you? No, I, I didn't see them. They, they were too fast. They got, got away out, out the back. <laughs> Will, Williams, Williams. Can't hear you, Harry. He's dead. Oh, poor man. Harry, I don't know who killed this bank guard, but I'll find out, and you can bank on that. Blackie, get out of my office. Don't you ever get tired of saying that, Faraday? The only thing I get tired of is you. Well, then it's time you retired or got smart or something and listened to me. I've been trying to tell you something. I know. You're trying to tell me my business. Oh, won't we gotta run it. The Parkway Bank was robbed this morning and a guard was killed. I know the Parkway Bank was robbed this morning and a guard was killed. You didn't tell me that. No, but I told you the license plate on that street commission truck parked in front of the bank is a clue to the killers. You must be slipping, Blackie. Haven't you ever heard of phony plates? Yes, but these plates weren't phony. They were too distinctive. All right, so they were distinctive. So what? So those plates will lead us to the truck, and that truck will lead us to whoever stole it. I think it was stolen by someone who works for the street commission. Isn't it enough to have you mixed up in this? You want to mix me up, too? You don't need any help in being mixed up. Yeah? It's not my fault they robbed a bank across the street from where I live. And don't say I was in on the robbery because my own money was in that bank. So you couldn't wait for the bank to open. You made a withdrawal, maybe. Only you added on your own interest. Look, never mind trying to be funny, will you? Let's go after someone on the street commission and see if we can... I'm sorry to disappoint you, Blackie. But last night, the only man on the street commission who had access to that truck reported it stolen. Now, what do you think of that? Well, I don't know what to think. What was his name? You don't know how to think. His name is John Manders. John Manders, huh? Well, in that case, I'm going down to the street commission workshop and see a Manders about a murder. Come in. Hello, Blackie. Hello, Murray. Oh, my, you look lonesome. Your apartment getting too big for you? No, but this city's too big for me. I've been all over town checking with every crew of street repairmen, and nobody's seen John Manders since late last night. Well, I phoned his home as you asked me to, and his wife says that she hasn't heard from him since late last night either. Blackie, yeah. do you really think he's a, a lead to the men who robbed the bank and killed the guard this morning? Well, the fact that he's missing convinces me more than ever, Mary. Uh, excuse me, will you? Uh-huh. Can't I ever talk to you without the telephone ringing? <laughs> Hello. Hello. Boston Blackie. Yes? Blackie, this is John Manders. Manders. Oh, wonderful. Uh, Manders, I'm looking for you. W- where are you? Never mind where I am, Blackie. Did you get my message? What message? Well, if you don't know, you didn't get it, so I'll give it to you now. Well, well, what's it all about? You'll know when I do. Manders. Manders. Hello? Hello? I don't know what happened. He's hung up. Oh, Mary. Somebody hung one on him. He was just about to tell me something about a message. What message? I don't know. All I know is we've lost Manders and maybe the last clue to the guys who killed that guard across the street. Billy, that ought to be Larry bringing Manders in. Go open the door. Right, Mr. Bridget. Whoa. Oh. Well, hi, Larry. Hi, Billy boy. Here he is. I seen him make a phone call, and I gave him a crack on the head like you said to, and I dragged him in, and here we are. Good work, Larry. Oh, thanks. I didn't tell anybody anything, Billy. Believe me, I didn't. Shut up. <coughs> got him tied up good and tight, huh, Larry? Oh, you got to hog tie a guy with a loose mouth, Billy boy. <laughs> well, I, I brung him in like you wanted, Mr. Beachy. Oh, thanks, Larry. Who was he talking to? Oh, you mean on the phone? Yes, of course. That was Boston Black. What's the idea, man? Yeah, what's the idea, man? You forced me into this. I didn't want to join you. I told you I didn't want any part of the robbing of the Parkway Bank. I told you it might be a killing, but you killed the guard. I sure did, Mandis. 
He got in my way. I kill anybody who gets in my way. You sure do, Mr. Preacher. Yeah, you do, Mr. Preacher. And guys who double-cross you, too. Look, I did what you told me to do. I let you steal that truck and help with the digging on the park where I did everything uh, just as you told me You tried to reach to. Boston Blackie. What did you tell him? Nothing. I didn't have a chance to. What are you going to tell him? What's the difference? I didn't do it, did uh, I? Maybe, and maybe not. I want to know what you said and what you were going to say. And if you don't start talking, <laughs> you're going to start dying. What do you mean, start dying? People who get in my way die quickly. People who double-cross me die slowly, Billy. Billy, gag yourself. Yeah, sure, Mr. Preacher. <laughs> Shut up. Uh, look, I just got an idea. Yeah, uh, uh, Larry, you go out and get some brick and mortar. Brick and mortar, We're going to yeah. put our screen friend in this little alcove here. Build a wall in front of him and let him suffocate quietly. Nicely and slowly. Well, it'll, it'll be more easy to just drill a hole in him with a bullet and dump him somewhere, Mr. Peach. Easier, yes, Larry. But no matter what you do with a party, it always pops up to cause you trouble. This party isn't going to pop up till this building falls down. <laughs> <laughs> That's not a bad idea, Mr. Peach. Yeah, it's not a bad idea, Mr. Peach. But Peachy. we'll kill him before we wall him up, won't we? Sure. Uh, no, just knock him out and seal him up alive. Alive? You He'll die more slowly that way. It'll be a lesson to him. <laughs> and a lesson to you two men, too. If you know what I mean. And now, back to Boston Blackie. <laughs> Parkway Bank, across the street from Blackie's apartment building, is robbed, and the guard shot and killed. The noise of blasting the vault and shooting the guard is not heard because of pneumatic drills being used in the street as a cover-up. John Manders, a street repairman, forced to join the gang, contacts Blackie to see if Blackie received his message. Blackie is not, and Manders is slugged before he can say any more. Later, he is bound and gagged and sealed behind a brick wall and left to die of suffocation. As we return to our story, Blackie and his friend, Murray Wesley, are watching repairmen fill the holes dug into the street in front of the parkway bank. Oh, the, those men certainly did a lot of damage with those drills, didn't they, Blackie? They didn't help the street any, Mary. But these guys with the steamrollers will soon have it fixed up. Mm-hmm. That fellow there looks as if he might be the foreman. Maybe he can tell me a few things I want to know. Hey, you, over there. Me, mister? Uh, yes, you got a minute? Me? I guess so. Are you the foreman of this gang? Me? Yeah, I am. Maybe you know a man by the name of Manders. John Manders? He was the uh, foreman of a crew like this. Sure, I know, John. All right. How well? Me? Oh, yeah. He's in trouble, you know. He's disappeared. So I hear. Was he asking for trouble? I mean... Do you know whether or not he was kicking around with any tough characters? John, wasn't a finer fellow in the apartment. Family man, loved his kids, took his pay home every Friday without even opening the envelope. Well, uh, was he in debt, or, or do you think he was in any other kind of trouble at all? Me? Never saw John do anything to speak to no one and get him into trouble. Fine man, John. Mighty sorry to hear he's in a jam. Boss! Hey, boss! Yes, yeah, Sam! We got the street repaired okay, except for a few lines in the pavement off to one side of where the big damage was. Yeah, I saw those lines. Let them go. First heavy traffic or hot day will smooth them out okay. That's what I figured, too. All right, man, let's pick up and get out of here. Anything else you want to know about John, mister? Hey, no, thanks. You've been a big help already. <laughs> Me? Glad to be of service any time, mister. All right, boys, let's get going. Get that equipment in the truck and get out of here. Well, Blackie, you learned a lot, didn't you? I learned a lot about how to repair streets, but <laughs> nothing about how to find John Manders and those killers. Well, the street certainly looks smooth, doesn't it? Yes, it does, but believe me, Mary, this case is awful rough. <laughs> Mighty pretty, Philly boy. <laughs> Looks good, huh? Oh, Philly boy, you're building the best brick wall I ever seen, I'm telling you. You like it, do you, Larry? Yeah. I should have been a bricklayer, I guess. Yeah, you put should. those last bricks up there, Billy. It's taking you over an hour already. You want them sealed up good and tight in this alcove, don't you, Mr. Preacher? Yes, good and tight. Well, I had to lay the wall two bricks wide so he can't kick it out while it's still wet. 
All right, Larry, get the plaster ready. Yeah. We'll plaster this thing over, and it'll look just like the rest of the room. Well, you're going to let me smear some of the plaster on, ain't you, Billy Boy, huh? Yeah, <laughs> sure. Well, there's the last brick in place, Mr. Beecher. Yeah, last oh, brick, oh. Mr. Beecher. <laughs> I wonder how long Mantis will live back there. <laughs> A few hours, maybe. I wonder if he's still out from that tap on the head I gave him. Well, I wonder what it was that Mandis was trying to tell Black. <laughs> <laughs> Probably about us. But we don't have to worry about it. We didn't have time to tell Blackie anything. And now no one will ever find Mandis behind that wall. Not till they tear this building down. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll be dead by the time they do that. Dead from old age. Well, we're, we're leaving town, ain't we, Mr. Beecher? Oh, no. I think we ought to, Mr. Peach. Yeah, I think we ought to, Mr. Peach. The cops are looking for us for killing that guard. And we may have Blackie on our necks pretty soon, too. Yeah. One more job, and then we'll decide. A bigger bank this time, though. Tell the boys to get the truck ready. We'll use the same trick of digging up the street to cover the blast in the bank. And any necessary shooting. All right, Mr. Peach. And then we'll leave in town, huh, Mr. Peach? If our take is big enough. If not, we'll stick around until we're really rich. You don't think we ought to worry about Blackie? Yeah. Oh, why should we, Billy? Manders never told him anything. In a couple of hours, Manders won't ever be able to tell anybody anything. Blackie, won't you please stop pacing up and down? I can't help it, Mary. I've got to figure out what Manders meant when he phoned here and asked me if I got his message. Well, he might not have meant anything. But I know he did. About to tell me what it was when he got slugged. Well, stop pacing, Blackie. Come here to the window. It's going to be a beautiful sunset. It's going to be a beautiful crime wave in this town if I can't find that gang. I have a hunch they're not one time operators. Well, let Inspector Faraday catch them. It's his job. But Mandis was trying to tell me something, and it's my job to figure out what it was and tell Faraday. Well, you figure it out at dinner, maybe. Um, let's go to. Uh, uh, no, no, I'm not hungry. Well,. Come over to the window and get some fresh air, and maybe you will be. Oh, look down there. You can see where they repaired the street this afternoon. Uh-huh. And the last time I looked out this window, I saw some guys tearing up the street and had no idea that about... Blackie, what's the matter? Look, Mary, just up the street from where they filled in those holes this afternoon. Huh? Where? Up there, Mary, about 10 or 15 feet from the first filled-in hole. Oh. See those lines in the street? Yeah, yeah, I do. Well, those are the grooves that the repairman decided not to cover. And am I glad they didn't, Mary? I have a hunch that's the message Manders wanted to get to me. Well, Blackie, it does look like a message. The first lines make almost a perfect three. And the second figure is the letter L. I'm sure of it. And then there's a, a box drawn on the street. A box or a square. It yeah. could be a square. And that entire thing down there could be an address. Yeah, it could be. It could be number three, something or other square. Mary, you get Faraday on the phone and tell him to get right up here. Okay. I'm going to have a look in the telephone directory. The telephone directory? Yes, because if that's a message drilled into the street, I'm on the right road to a solution of this case. Shh, Faraday, can't you even open a door without making a noise? What do you want me to do, Blackie? Carry an oil can with me in case of rusty hinges? I think we're walking into an empty house anyhow. This is number three, Lincoln Square, the only address that fits that 3L Square message on the street in front of my building. Huh? What was the matter with number three, Ludlow Square? It's a vacant lot. Number three, Lawrence Square. No such address. And number three, Lord William Square. It's a hamburger stand. Mary and I checked all possibilities, Faraday, and this is the only one that fits the description of a hideout. Your men have had time to surround the place now. Let's go in. All right. But I bet we don't find anything except dust. That scrawling on the street in front of your building didn't mean anything. Shh, come on. Here's another door. Now, you open this one, so you can't gripe at me if, it's, if it creaks. Oh, brother. Hey, I hear somebody coming into the room from the other side. So do I, duck back. Quiet. You be quiet. Can you see who it is? Not yet. You said the place was empty, huh? Well, just... Those are my men, stupid. There's nobody else here. Faraday, I still say that was a message on the street, and... Now what? I just heard a car pull up in the back of the house. Well, you stop this nonsense. 
Well, boys, we're going to do this again. You heard that, didn't you, Faraday? I sure did. Back out of sight, everybody. Okay. Quick, man, get down. Behind anything. Stay there. Get back at this door with me, Faraday. If you're pulling your stomach, there'll be room. Now don't talk to me. The way your neck is always sticking out. Shh. Many of the truck and those drills and tools out in the bushes and back, boys. After night was so easy, I think we'll stay in town. Pull a few more. Yeah, uh, sure, Mr. Beecher. Well, I, I'm sure glad we didn't have to shoot nobody like we had it the first time, Mr. Beecher. Well, nobody got on our way this time, Larry. And what's more, we didn't have Manders to worry about. You shouldn't have forced Manders to join us, Mr. Beecher. No, you shouldn't have forced Manders. Those straight guys aren't ever any good. No, no, they, they're too Sunday school, Come Mr. on, Faraday, we've heard hey. enough. Let's grab Ooh, Come on, Get in there, Come on, now. Oh, shut up, Can't work, man. You got him in cuffs and make his land. Oh, I knew it. I should have stayed on the farm. Oh. Shut up, Faraday. All right, take those guys out of here. You know what to do with them. Who can't do this? All right, well, Blanky, I guess I owe you an apology. But you owe me one, too. Do I? What for? You said John Manders was the lead to this Beecher and his gang. But we found the gang without finding him. Ah. Well, I think I can find him, Faraday. Huh? Get me one of those crowbars from the truck in the back of the house. And I'll dig him up for you. <laughs> Blackie, what makes you think you'll find something behind this wall? The fresh plaster on it, Faraday. This part of the wall has just been built. I think it hides a closet or an Oh, alcove. you're out of your mind. How big a hole are you going to knock on the wall before you're satisfied you've wasted enough of my time? It won't have to be much bigger. There, that's got it. Now, look what's behind the wall, Faraday. A pair of legs. They're moving, too. That guy's still alive. Come on, let's haul him out. Okay, I've got him. Lower him, kid. That's it. A little more. I gag on him just about choking him to death. Well, don't just stand there. Take it off before it does choke him. I'll have it off. I've got it. Thanks. Thanks, you guys. Thanks a lot. I was just about done for it. I'm Boston Blackie. Are you John Manders? Yeah. You got my message? I sure did. The feature and his mob almost got you first. What were you doing mixed up in this mob, Manders? I was forced into it. They said they'd kill my kids if I didn't go along with them. Sit up, Manders. I'll untie your hands. That story doesn't make much sense, Manders. Why did they run the risk of taking a stranger into the gang? It trick was to tear up the street in front of the bank. They were blessed, and they wanted a regular crewman on the job to show his credentials in case someone from the street commission came along. That makes good sense, Faraday. Hey, huh? Your hands are free now, Manders. Uh, thanks again, Frank. But, Manders, how did you have sense enough to drill a message in the street? And how did you know I'd get it? Well, I didn't know what to do about tipping the police, Blakey. Until I saw... Where we were pulling the job. Then I knew it was in front of your apartment. I remembered reading your address in the papers. And I got the idea for the message. Well, it was a good idea, too. It saves your own life. If you'll have to come down to headquarters with me, I have to file a technical charge against you. Right. Well, Manders, thanks to the fact that uh, I can read and you can write, everything for Beecher and his gang turned out all wrong. Thank <laughs> you.